Hey guys, so in the last video we were having some issues with these resolvers and type definitions but I just looked into the code and we have index.js and we are going to export default as type depths from our type definition so whatever is inside our type definition and I'm going to copy this part and going to paste it and now I'm going to default resolvers so this is how we're gonna export that from here and then we're gonna cache that in our index src so instead of this what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get rid of one actually let me cut this resolver keyword that we need it and now I'm gonna extract that over here and with a comma and now this time this is coming from our GraphQL so that automatically it will pick it from our index.js file and now if I do we will we won't find any kind of issues with our server and it's working just fine so now if I go ahead to my browser and still run this query and we're still getting back that data and also in our docs you can see we have our root queries and root mutations and everything is defined well enough over here so now that's fun for us now it's time to go ahead and start creating our models so I'm gonna quickly close everything and not even this and we'll have this post.js uh, resolver and then also this post.js type definition so we're gonna work with these two also here and then also in the models I'm gonna create a new file called post.js so it's time to go ahead and start creating our schema so I'm gonna import schema as well as a model from our mongoose packet that we have installed in the first video and now I'm gonna create a schema so that will be a post schema so we'll say const post schema equal to new schema and in that I'm going to define the type of my schema so here we in this one we can define our types then also it has additional parameters so I want to set timestamps so that it's true and then I'm gonna look for the I have to define the connection so for that I can simply say const post equal to model dot actually model and in that it will be collections post and this will use this our post schema and then I'm gonna default export it defaultly from their post and now if I save it everything is fine now we'll define the fields of our post schema so the post should be have a title should have a title and this will be of a type a string require set it true because without any title we cannot create a post then it should have a content and then the same fields without any content we cannot allow the user to create any post and also it should have featured image and with that I'm gonna copy the same but this time it's false so a user can create a post without any image in that featured image in that and that's how we'll do and now in our index I'm gonna export default as post and whatever we are bringing in from our post the post JS file so this is done and now in our type definition instead of this hello query that we have dummy hello query I'm also gonna get rid of this hello query hello function that we are going to create and I'm gonna create a new query as well as a mutation so let me say get all posts and this will be returning basically an array so I can simply say an array of something called post and that shouldn't be null and then we have to define this post 
post wh how what are the things and what should look how it should look so the way you can do that by saying type post and then we'll have a title then we have a content and that we have a featured image and then since we have also added this timestamp set it to true it should it will also have a created at and updated at fields to updated at and now we'll define the types of each so this will be basically a string and that is not always required so we can get that and this can also be not required always but the content should be required so we can simply say string this is required and then also our title should be our string so this is a basic schema for our post that we have created so now if I save it hopefully and now we just have to register this query here so I'm gonna register that query and this is gonna take error function in that and that error function is gonna return whatever we'll send from here so let's say title for now and hello world and this is dummy and now we'll connect with the database in this video content this is sample content and now if I save it um, we won't find any error here in our server it's running properly and now we go to our Google Chrome browser and a playground instead of this hello we'll look for get all post and we want back title from there so we'll simply say title and one more thing it will also return the array over here because all the posts should be in an array so instead of this I'm gonna wrap inside an array so now this will work just fine and now if I save it run this we are getting a list of an all the post so for now let's say if I try to add a new one here and I'm gonna say post paste it over to and now if I save it go back here and run here so we are now interested in our title we are just asking for the title that's why we are just getting the title back but if I look for the content and now if I run now we are just getting the content so this gives a flexibility of choosing whatever fields you want on the front end you can query that to the back end and they get the same field unless like a rest uh, unlike like rest in which we will get whatever has been given you just have to create some kind of uh, function in order to uh, protect that happening but with GraphQL that makes our life so simple with this so now it's time to go ahead and connect with our database and for our database in our main index.js file that we have I'm gonna bring in mongoose so basically I'm gonna bring in mongoose from mongoose and let me cut this from here I will just write below the express line and I'm gonna make this uh, asynchronous function so basically when we are trying to connect with a database that will take some time so we just want to block over here so for that we'll simply say await mongoose.connect we'll call that connect method and in that we'll pass our database so for that I'm gonna go to my this file okay instead of this here I'm gonna bring in DB from our config so far we haven't defined that in our configuration and we'll pass that DB and for now I'm commenting this line so that our app doesn't break and in a configuration I'm gonna create a new constant called mongo DB local host to 7017 port and after that we'll specify the name of the database so that will be our post GQL app 
and also we don't have to create our data manually go and create our database it will automatically set it up for us and now I'm gonna uncomment this line and in that we'll pass our DB so now if I hover over this DB we can find that we have a string import, exported from there and once this, we are done connecting we are also we are, have to also pass some couple of extra parameters so use unify use unified topology and first of all if, uh, you know, this new URL parser then use unified topology we have to set both of them true and also I'm gonna use one more so that we can execute queries very in the short hands so use find and modify we'll set it to false so once we are done connecting with our database we want to give some kind of callback so I'm gonna copy this whole success function paste it over here and we'll simply say successfully connected with database and this will be helpful in connecting our application with our database and now if I go to my this terminal now you can see firstly it's connecting with the database then it's spinning up the server so that's why we we use async and await over here to just to do not start the server until we are done connecting with our database so what else I'm gonna do to make it an error prone if anything goes wrong we want some I'm gonna wrap it inside try catch block and this will throw some kind of error so that we can debug it well and now I'm gonna use this error function which I have brought in from a consola so we'll simply say error and we'll pass our message it will also take the same things and whatever we have inside that error dot message will will run that here and we'll set bash set it to true and now if I I'm done with that with all that done we are good to go with our application so now if I go ahead and just I break this server this docker and I'm gonna start my do stop my docker container so I will simply say docker com container stop mongo and this will stop my mongo's container which is running inside my docker instance so now it's stopped and now if I quickly reload my server if I save it now in a console you can check that out that now it's taking quite a bit and after 30 seconds of time it will give me the that error message that we are not able to connect with our server the, due to this this reason and we can do a lot of logging stuff over here so let's wait I'm gonna quickly make that time frame faster and now you can see we are getting message that error connection refused at this port whatever we are looking for so this is how our error badge is looking so I'm gonna run that docker start mongo again and we are also gonna look into the exec directory exec one so I'm gonna open a new terminal and quickly increase the font size and everything docker exec it mongo mongo and this will connect with our mongo daemon shell I think some issues happen okay again I typed that exact so now this is connected with our mongodb shell and now we can access our database and everything over here so that we can keep the track whatever things are and meanwhile I'm gonna respawn my server so for that I'm just gonna save it again this file and now you can see that our server started running and everything is working fine so now it's time to go ahead and start creating our first schema our first model so first of all what I'm going to do is inside our index.js from where we have we're going to bring that thing inside our main app and then we are going to provide that inside the context and then this context variable that we have this, uh, defined in this server that will be accessible within our resolver so that we don't have to go and specify the model we have to bring in models in every file we have provide we'll inject those models in here so I'm gonna import all as app models 
from our models. So this will go to our index.js file and it will ask, hooray, what a, hey, whatever you are exporting here, we want to name them all as app models. And in here, we are gonna, we are gonna just spread those app models. So I will simply say app models. And in that context, we are just ready with our this feature. So now it's time to go ahead and create our first post. So for that, I'm trying to explain a lot and feel free to message me instead of this dummy text, we'll get, we'll get back to this later. But since we are creating a new ski, a new something on the database, that means it's not a query, it's not gonna be query, it's gonna be a mutation that we discussed in the first video. So we'll simply say extend type mutation and that mutation will be create a post, create new post, and that post sh should have something. So the new post will be there, and this should be of type some kind of input. So we have to specify any kind of input with this input type, and we'll simply say new post input, and this will take an content and the title and also will take featured image actually not type new input and then also it can be featured image so we are restricting the user with this exclamation mark that these are the required fields but this featured image is not if you want to provide that you can provide it but if you don't want to provide that you shouldn't you you, you are free to do that so this will be of type of post and this will return me a type of post and that cannot be null. So these are the required fields just to create a new post. This is not, uh, this, this is not required. So that's what we are defining over here. And now we are, we have to register that create new post inside our post resolver. So under the query, I'm going to give a comma within the same object and what, whatever the mutation will define over here will get in inside here so this is query and this is going to take an argument and since it is we have a lot of database interaction happening going to happen so i'm going to define it as an asynchronous function and now if i save it we have all that here and let's see let's for now return the same stuff that we have but this time we want just a singular knotted array here we were sending an array but here you are sending a single post back so we just have to return that and let's see what do we get so this object is getting here and now if I were to run any mutation I will simply say create new post actually I like it some kind of convention create new post and, and within that create post new post function and this will take a new post object and this should have a title and see everything is started hinting by this playground so that we can play post and let me make this first of all empty let's see what do we get back I'm gonna get back a title and we also gonna get back the content and as I run this we are getting that back but we haven't passed anything here so we'll simply say new post and we'll have a title let's say post one so far we are not dealing with anything else content and it is also hinting what kind of thing that we are asking you over here by the user so we'll simply say this is sample content for GQL app and we can also prettify our document so that we can link everything in our next line so this is nothing but a JSON data. Uh, we can verify that. And let's create that. We are getting back the title. If I get rid of this content, 
earlier on, we are just getting like the title. But now new post is not created over here. So let's see why, how we can create a new post inside the server. So this takes actually four things. So let me put one by one. And then we have a context and also info. And let's let it return this. But before that, I'm gonna say console.log underscore underscore so whatever we have defined here we are just doing that console.log args and we'll say that we are printing args over here and then we have a console.log and we have info so info and then we are gonna print that here and we'll see what we are getting inside the console statement log statement so now we can find no errors here and now if I go ahead and execute this query from here and I run this we are getting back that thing but that thing has been has a lot of thing inside so in arguments this is currently undefined we'll deal with this thing when we will will be handling with our directives but for now you can see whatever we have passed inside as a new post we can see that as here as a new post and then we have a, inside that we have a title as well as the content whatever we have passed and then we have info so it says that whatever the field name we were accessing so it was a create new post field and it told me all, all the things whatever we have so it has a lot of information inside about our uh, our this query that we have just created so now as you know that we are just getting our new post inside this argument so I'm gonna destructure that I'll simply say new post and gonna get rid of all of it with a just simple console log statement so basically I'm destructuring that new post from our arguments variable and new post and we'll write that new post over here and now if I save it as you can see everything is formatted well enough by my this thing and now if I go ahead and run this again query and one more thing I forgot to tell you about this context object so console dot log context I'll pass that context over here let's see what happens if I run this create new post nothing is happening but you can see we have our post is created and within that context we can see our model that we have passed over there so inside the code you can see we are getting our model from index.js then we brought in registered into our main application we brought in here and then we passed that we spread it that thing here so whatever it was exported as a post and now we have that access to that thing to here inside our resolver so now we can use that post model in order to create our new post from the database and also I'm gonna get rid of this info so for now that should just work fine so also from our context we have a post schema a post model that we exported from our that and we are just again destructuring it getting it back and now I'm gonna create a new post over here so using that this model and the value we can create a new post later we'll get into the validation and a lot of other stuff using user schema and those things but for now let result equal to await post dot actually we'll use simply we'll create that so we'll simply say not here actually await post.create we are using this create function and this is gonna be an asynchronous task that's why we, it will take some time that's why we are using asynchronously using it asynchronously using this await keyword and I'm gonna pass whatever we have inside our new post so and then whatever we have inside the result we want to return back result and now let's check nothing is happening so far 
and let me quickly go to database here in so show I'm gonna write show DBs so currently we have these many DBs so mainly this is for our other stuff MongoDB stuff and this is one I already have but in our database you can see inside a configuration I have defined that on post GQL and that schema does not exist just yet so now if I'm gonna run this query and let's see what happens create new post and now we are getting this post one title back but now in our database if I again show DBs now you can see that post GQL app database is already ready and let's see if we have that post in stored inside our database or not so for that I'm gonna say use and I'm gonna copy the name paste it and show collections we have one collection that is post so this is this post is just nothing but whatever we have defined inside our this model this collection and then if I write db.post.find and if I write that we have our post stored over there this is a sample content for GraphQL application we can predefine that too by simply saying so everything is well organized now and we can see our post and meanwhile we can also see our created at and updated at fields also attached with that post so we have a featured image too so I'm gonna write that feature image and since these two fields were very important to, in order to create our uh, create our graph keyword this part now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna quickly grab a link from images.google.com and we'll look for let's say Apollo logo and let's see Follow Express. So for now, I think this image would just work fine for us. Open image in new tab. I'm gonna copy this. Control Z. Copy this. In our playground, I'm gonna paste that. And let me name it two. Okay. And we wanna get back body, uh, not body, actually content. We also wanna get back the featured image. So now if I create new post, now we have that post stored in, uh, inside our database and we are also getting it back. And in our database, if I run the same command, now we have two posts. So one is here, the other one is here. So this also contains our featured image that we have stored over there. So I'm gonna quickly clear my terminal and that's how we can create our post. So we can also meanwhile look into how we can get all the posts instead of this dummy content that we have already created over here and again this is gonna take a asynchronous task so first parameter that is not required for now and we also don't need this part too so I'm gonna just leave it empty I don't want anything but I do need this post mo post post model in order to get all the posts so we will simply say let results equal to or let's say posts equal to await post.find and this will return me this post and then we'll return this post over there and now I'm gonna run this query so get all the posts and the title and the content and if I run this now we have all the posts over here so if I want to access featured image to I can create that and now we have the featured image here we are having null so this can be null we mentioned it and here we don't want to make it null so we can we also want let's say access created at and updated at field 2 so we can mention that here and run them again and now you can see that we have access to that so whatever is asked from the front end that we are getting from the back end so this reduces a lot of payload uh, that we send from a server in order and that's enhancing the performance and the frequency and later in the videos we'll go, get into the stuff like data loaders how you can optimize a lot of things but currently this is just gonna work fine for us and before just ending this video I just want to get into the variable stuff so let me quickly do this 
and we can also access them as a variable over here. So in order to create as a model code, so let's say we have a title and this should be a type string and that is required. Then we have a content that is also of type string that is again required and then we have a variable called featured image and that is not required so we'll simply say a string and instead of this passing as a strings inside this we'll simply reference them over here dollar content and dollar feature image and now if I want to run with the variables now we can do that too so in our query variables I'm going to pass an object and I will simply say title so we have a title over here let's say this is post 3 then we have the post content so now it started linting that whatever we want so this is sample content for the post 3 for the post 3 and let's me quickly give a comma let's increase a bit featured image to I want to pass a featured image so not this one I'm gonna get into this one copy image address I'm gonna paste it and now for now we are just passing a plain string but later we'll handle how we can upload the images on the server and now if I go ahead and create this now we can see our this has been in, inside the database so this is how we can pass our variables and we can also prefy that too so now this you can I'm gonna copy and save it actually cut it from here and I'm gonna create a new folder inside my so inside my root docs and um, within that I'm gonna create a new file called post.gql and this later can be shared with the team or on the front end team so they they can they can get the idea how we can how we can access these things and that's how we are gonna work with this so thank you guys for the next video in the next video we'll look start looking into getting a single post by id as well as the creation and updation and deletion of the posts so stay tuned with my channel hope you enjoyed this content and please subscribe to my channel if you like my content if you want me to help us just to grow i am just a hobbyist i'll read a lot and then go through the documentation and just provide some content if I'm providing some kind of value just if it is a worth sharing please share and subscribe to my channel thank you guys